In a Tibetan monastery in southern India, Buddhists pay homage to the reincarnation of a senior Lama. They believe Ling Rinpoche, once senior tutor to the Dalai Lama, has been reborn and is blessing them and the gifts they bring. He's here in the form of a five-year-old boy. The ceremonies have lasted all day, and in mid-afternoon, this remarkable infant still behaves with the composure expected of a high lama. Those who queue for a blessing are from many parts of the world and many walks of life. They include Richard Gere, the Hollywood film star. For 30 years, scientists have investigated other children who appear to remember previous lives. Tibetan Buddhists say they have their own ancient methods to precisely identify a child like this. The reincarnation of an 81-year-old Lama who died on Christmas Day, 1984. Is there real evidence for reincarnation, a form of life after death? Tibetans believe senior lamas who choose to be reborn can be traced by an ancient formula. This includes looking for mystic signs in the flame of a butter lamp, consulting oracles and astrologers, and meditation. The Dalai Lama led the search for Ling Rinpoche. A year after Rinpoche's death, search parties went to various Tibetan settlements. They returned with long lists of possible candidates. The concerned people, you see, gave me um, full, I say, one quite big batch of paper, the list of the name. Then, through my my own investigation, mm, not there. Then I asked them, not here, even though you see, more than I think, oh, five hundred or something. Mm. Then I I told them, oh, it seems not here, <laughs> that they are disappointed. <laughs> but then somehow they again you see start to fight. Then. Near Dhamsara, the place called Beer, one child somehow, you see, they uh, missed. The child was found in this orphanage at Dharamsala. His mother had died and his father was too poor to support him. The infant was 21 months old. The search party said he appeared to know them. One member was a servant to the dead senior tutor for almost 50 years. Chanda. Chanda the infant passed the recognition test. He could identify belongings of the dead monk from similar articles. He was declared a tulku, a reincarnated lama. He was examined by the Dalai Lama, who said the child knew his way around the palace and seemed to recognize former colleagues and servants. The new Ling Rinpoche was taken to meet the people in Dharamsala. He was barely two years old. His personality and bearing helped to convince the Tibetans and others that he was truly the reincarnated senior lama. When I met the young boy the first time, right after he had been identified, he came and jumped into my arms and patted me on the head, it acted very much like he knew me. And although I did not believe in reincarnation uh, at the time, or I had no evidence uh, at the time, when I met this young child, I was absolutely certain that it was him, that it was the old man. It felt exactly like it was the old man back again, uh, acting the same way he had acted uh, when I had seen him, which was seven years before. Today, this child is five years old. The orphanage is a distant memory. The old servant is now the boy's guardian, 
and they live in a bungalow next to the Drepong Monastery. At the end of this day of ceremonies, the boy, now Ling Rinpoche, will become a monk. The Tibetans say they have several children like this, high lamas who've chosen to be reborn. The University of Virginia is the center of research into claims by children to remember former lives. Almost 3,000 cases have been investigated by Professor Ian Stevenson. One child in 500 might have such memories, according to a survey in northern India. But the memories begin to fade by about the age of six. There seem to be fewer cases in the West. We do hear quite often from the parents of Western children that uh, they wish they'd known about this research uh, when their little boy was three years old because he was saying, I used to be a pilot and uh, I was shot down and we told him to stop telling fibs and, and now he doesn't remember anything and we can't uh, uh, say much to you about the case. So some cases are definitely suppressed in the West, but they are much more readily found in uh, South Asia than they are in the uh, United States and Canada and Western Europe. In British Columbia, Canada, there are people for whom reincarnation is an ingrained tradition, the North American Indian. They appear to be Christian, but older beliefs are just below the surface. These beliefs may have come from Asia, because the tribes are descendants of hunters who crossed from Asia when the continents were joined in the Ice Age. In Canada, Dr. Antonia Mills continues Dr. Stevenson's researches. Some claims of reincarnation involve birthmarks, perhaps corresponding to some injury in a past life. These will be checked against medical records. Dr. Mills has studied cases in other parts of the world. She knows there are differences here. In most tribal groups, the previous personality, the person who is said to be coming back, is closely related to the, the subject, to the child. And in such cases, it's very difficult to be sure that statements that the child might make are not based on knowledge that the child could learn from its parents speaking about this person. So one has to use a lot of caution in analyzing these cases. Among the congregation at Maurice Town Church is 82-year-old Emma Michelle of the Wet'suwet'en tribe. Mrs. Michelle believes in reincarnation. In this family photograph, she is aged four. With her is her brother Jimmy, whose battered body was pulled from the Skeena River. His death remained a mystery until years later, when Emma's infant grandson, also called Jimmy, was playing on the floor. The bell in the nearby church began to toll. The boy asked his grandmother why the bell was ringing. Mrs. Michelle said it was because a neighbor was dead. The child asked, who? Donald Gray, I said. Why he died, he said. He hired somebody to kill me that time, that's why I'm dying, he said. He hired three men to kill me. That's why I'm dying, too. Now he died, eh? he said, and he laughed about him. The family believe young Jimmy was the reincarnation of his great uncle. He described in detail how his great uncle was beaten up and thrown into the river in a dispute over fishing rights. Gaffing the salmon in the Maurice Town Canyon is as dangerous as it looks, but it's a source of status and wealth. A chief has rights here and others must move aside. Jimmy Senior's right to fish was challenged by Donald Gray. There was a bitter quarrel. Ironically, the reincarnated Jimmy also died in the Skeena River. He fell or was thrown from this cliff. But his death has not ended the cycle of rebirth. There's always a cycle that you can't stop. And this is where the reincarnation fits in. 
Another of Emma's grandchildren, Nelson, is a pupil at this lecture on the cycles of life. Nelson is believed to be a reincarnation of both Jimmy's. His family say that as an infant, Nelson could remember their previous lives. He used to wish he'd been born a girl, so then there'd be less chance of ending up dead for a third time in the Skeena River. Today, Nelson's memories have faded, but he used to tell his family about his previous lives and a car he once owned. He used to run around the car and he used to tell my parents, and he used to tell them that this was his car, and all the wheels were flat, and he used to kick them and say, this was his car, who did that to it? And he was just two, two and a half. Really little. Very small. All the children in this game are said to be reincarnates, not simply because of what they remember. Some have birthmarks corresponding with marks on the dead person whose life they spoke about. Newborn babies are minutely examined for telltale signs. I interrupt your card game. I wanted to take a picture of your the bump on your head. Is that okay? Yeah. Your mom said it was this child is said to be the reincarnation of an aunt who suffered a head wound before she died. This combination of statements by the child, birthmarks, characteristics, medical conditions that relate to a previous personality, these have to be examined very carefully and in a number of cases the evidence is very difficult to explain. For example, these cases where the children have pierced ear marks. This is not something that would be genetically transmitted. Birthmarks on the ears are similar to scars caused by earrings worn by chiefs. In some cases, a tribal elder has had an announcing dream, saying that a chief has been reborn. An examination of the baby has then revealed the matching earmarks. I have not been able to think of an explanation that accounts for the phenomena in these cases other than reincarnation. But what reincarnation is, what is being reincarnated, that's of course still a very large question that's not fully understood. <laughs> Professor Stevenson has studied hundreds of birthmarks and birth defects in children who claim previous lives. I'm particularly interested in a collection we have about 15 cases where there are two birthmarks corresponding to bullet wounds of entry and exit. And uh, forensic pathologists know that nearly always when you, if you shoot somebody, the bullet wound of entry is small and round and the bullet wound of exit is large and irregular in shape. And that's the way our birthmarks and about half of these cases, they correspond exactly that way. This boy was born without a right ear, but with memories of the life of a man who was shot in the head. He remembered uh, the previous life of a peasant farmer, this was in Turkey, who went to sleep at the end of the day uh, in a pasture, and a neighbor came along hunting rabbits, and in the twilight mistook uh, this uh, sleeping peasant for a rabbit and shot him with a shotgun at point-blank range. We were able to go to the government hospital where the wounded man had been taken and uh, there we found a report showing that he died about 10 days later of uh, hemorrhage in the brain. And this boy had memories uh, of uh, this uh, man's life and his, and his death. The skull of a Turkish miller killed by a blow to the back of the head with a flour shovel. This picture is from the official post-mortem report. Later, a child claimed to remember the miller